you know, the way I look at it, and this is very personal, you know, I don't back this up with any great theological harangue. This is how I see it today. You know, we're all on a journey is another thing to say. You know, these ideas that here's the fixed position, this is what your belief is, is crazy because, you know, that's like fatherhood. You know, I'm a different person as a grandfather than I was as a father. Um, but the way I see it is this, in exactly the same way as Jesus is the lens through which I read scripture or try to, and his confrontation with the Torah was always, well, I don't care what it says. Here's what I'm telling you. I think that the New Testament itself, and this is where some sort of mystical faith comes in, obviously, this isn't an intellectual construct, this is faith talking, has to be read again through the same lens. I don't read Paul and Peter, I don't read John or the book of the Apocalypse the way I read the life and teaching of Jesus. And I'll give you something that's going to sound off the wall to some people. You know, I, I think Jesus is essentially perfect and stuck in a flawed book. And I think that because of the way he himself challenged what wasn't a book then. That's just, we have to understand this, you know, it wasn't a book then. But I think that challenge goes forward as well as backward. So if the, if the scriptures are bound into a single volume, including the Old and New Testament, you know, leave aside the Apocrypha and all the wrangling over the book of Revelation and so forth and so on, but let's just say it is a book somehow ordained by God to come down, almost like, uh, you know, Joseph Smith's golden tablets here, a kind of a magical book. That said, there's a hierarchy within that spirituality. And to me, as someone, and this is a statement of faith, all right, not an intellectual statement, not a theological statement, a statement of faith as someone who's trying to follow Jesus. I say, basically, Jesus preempts, period. And that includes the rest of the New Testament. I don't care as much how Paul is trying to interpret Jesus as what is left of what Jesus said. Here's how I picture the New Testament being written. Uh, I picture it as a writer Okay, because I've edited lots of my own books and other people's books and I've read. All right. There's a big difference between the source and the edited version or what was added to round things out because in an editorial meeting they want to finish a chapter. And frankly, when you look at the spirit of the sort of stark, empathetic simplicity and directness of Jesus' own words and teaching in the Sermon on the Mount, just take that. All right. There's no question that when they are when, it, when these teachings are interpreted later, they are being interpreted by people who were probably made uncomfortable by Jesus. Remember the society he was in. Jesus was operating in a world that makes the Taliban and Al-Qaeda look nice. Jewish Semitic culture of the first century was about as misogynistic and harsh, racist, insular, circle the wagons as you can get. They hated the outsiders. They couldn't stand anybody who wasn't of their tribe. This is, this is Middle Eastern, unreconstructed misogyny. These are people who treat women like garbage. Okay, look at, just take one example. So Jesus is sitting in the home of Mary and Martha without a male relative present, just him and the, and the, and the women. And he turns to one of them and he says, come out of the kitchen, what are you doing in there? Come out here in the living room and talk. What? Do you, you know, this is, this is Saudi Arabia we're talking about. This is take off your veil and get out here. We're, we're having a discussion. What are you doing making little sweets and coffee in the kitchen? Get out here. This is not okay in that culture. And the same goes for all the rest of it. Touching lepers looking at a Roman occupier, the equivalent of an SS guard in a Jewish camp, and saying, by the way, the only person I found the fullest righteousness with, within in this culture is this Roman. This is not what goes down well. So when I look at the rest of the New Testament as a pitch to the Jewish and then to the Gentile community, a lot of it, and I'm just talking as a writer here, looks like people trying to make an incredibly dangerous, forward-looking set of teachings, a little safer and more approachable. So Paul's saying, well, actually what he meant was, if you're a woman, sit down and shut up. Because that's his culture. He's trying to pitch this to people who are reactionary misogynists. So let's have a little order in this church. 
So I think after the effect, you've got to read your New Testament. And I'm not saying I have any verse by verse better interpretation than other people. I'm talking about the spirit of it. Jesus still has to be the lens. And I'm looking at what Paul's saying and I'm saying, really, really? Come out of the kitchen and sit down and talk with me as a male without a male accompaniment. I wanna hear your opinion. Let's just talk. Yeah, sure, it's okay. You touch the hem of my garment, big deal. You're unclean, I don't care. You're saying that the way we interpret this when we put an organization in, together is that 50% of our congregation has to show up silent and shut up? This, this guy started this? This is how this works? So I don't believe it. Doesn't mean I see no value because these people were nearer the source. They have a lot to say. But once again, I think you've got to be tough-minded. You have to ask yourself a question. Am I following Jesus or am I following the New Testament? Am I following Jesus or am I following the Torah? Am I following Jesus or am I following the Republican Party? Am I following Jesus or am I following my career ambitions? It doesn't matter how you slice this. You can't do both. And, and Jesus certainly never talked as if you could.